I've been making a lot of this top. It's the Vogue 9006 with some added little cap sleeves from a Nicola pattern, the 4452. I will link both of them in the description down below. So this tutorial is for view A, which is the one with the two princess seams down the centre front, which technically should be sleeveless. I absolutely love this top and I have been making a lot of them. The first couple I made were following the instructions from the pattern and they were completely unlined. That did mean that I ended up with some visible top stitching to finish off the armhole with bias binding and also around the hem, which is totally fine. It's just not my personal preference. You can totally French seam the entirety of this top if you don't want to line it, but <laughs> me being me, I do prefer a full lining on most of my garments because of the finish that I can achieve. So whilst this is technically meant to be a video for how to draft and line a top with a grown on facing, this has also ended up being a sew along for the Vogue 9006. So this is how I did it. Okay, so for the Vogue 9006, to line it, you're going to need the front A piece because we're working with the A style of this pattern. Hopefully you can see this because I've already added two. Yeah, you think you can see it there. So this was the original stitching line and this was the original cut edge of the pattern. I want to fully line this because it just means that there's no visible top stitching and for me it's a slightly quicker process because otherwise I would French seam everything on the inside. So one of the things that this pattern has is a grown on facing which is what this piece up here is and there is a fold line that was in the pattern that I've drawn in. So what I did was I stuck an extra piece of paper down this way, folded the pattern along that fold line and then traced out extra uh, paper on here just to make the facing a little bit longer. I did that because my previous iteration, which I had to do, ended up looking like this. And as you can imagine, in a slinky fabric, this is a very annoying piece of fabric to cut out. But I had to go with this iteration from my previous tops because I'd already cut out the exterior fabric. So I had to make my lining match up with the exterior fabric because I decided to line it after the fact. Now that I know that I like lining this top. I am going to get rid of this pattern piece and extend the grown on facing down. So this is, as I say, the stitching line here. This is the cut edge. And I have basically gone two inches further down from the stitching line. So I have added that extra piece that you can see here to the grown on facing. Basically, this is the back neckline center back neckline because it's a kind of a, a stand up collar i've added in here extra fabric to the facing down to here which has meant that i now have a straight line which is where my so this is going to all be fashion fabric and then from here down is where the lining will get attached and the lining this time will be a straight line of stitching rather than that curved line of stitching. So once I've got the grown on facing extended down to where I wanted it to be, I drew in the stitching line, then added 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance because this pattern is working with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I then laid over another piece of paper and traced out the rest of that center front pattern piece. I've ended up with a piece that is exactly the same size as the bottom of the front piece. Again, I drew in the stitching line and then I've added seam allowance to the top of that. So we've got seam allowance added to the bottom there and seam allowance added to the top of the stitching line here, which means that when we lay this over each other, the stitching line matches up in the seam allowance either side, which means that we'll be able to sew those pieces together. So that is the only change that I need to make to this pattern to be able to line it. All the other pattern pieces, you will just cut out your exterior fabric and your lining fabric as normal. So for example, this side front, it says to cut two and you want to do that cut two of your exterior fabric and then cut two of your lining fabric. So these are what your pattern pieces should end up looking like. And again, it's literally just the grown on facing has been extended a little bit further and been given a straight stitching line rather than a curved 
edge the curved edge it would have been the hem and a curved edge would have looked really nice it being sewn as a narrow rolled hem but because I'm going to be attaching it to some lining I wanted a straight seam which is what I've given myself there hopefully that makes sense and now that I've got the pattern changed I can then cut it out of my fabric so I'm going to be using some silk viscose that I got from Stitch Fabrics and I want to fully line that one because it is slightly sheer so let's get that all cut out Okay, so now that I've got everything cut out, step number five is a stitch dart in the back and press towards the center. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is sew my darts in the regular way, which means I'm going to backstitch at the start of the dart and then sew off of the tip, leave myself some nice long thread tails and tie those in a couple of knots. So I'm gonna get that done for both of the out of fabric and the lining. Long tail left, backstitched at the end. So I'm going to tie this into three knots. You don't want to pull these knots too tight because the reason we don't backstitch at the end of the dart is to just not add any bulk there so that the dart end doesn't become really noticeable. If you pull the knots too tight then you'll end up with the same problem. So they need to be flush against the fabric but not like super super tight. That's why I do three. So I'm then going to cut off the excess leave myself some little tails and that's the darts sewn. So the next thing that we want to do is sew up the back seam. This is a straight seam so you could cut this on the fold but that just is a little bit more fabric hungry which is why I think this pattern has a centre back seam. Also if you want to add longer sleeves or the sleeves that the pattern comes with so it comes with little short sleeves or full bishopy sleeves. If you wanted to add either of those you might want to consider actually putting in a centre to back seam much like I do for the by hand London Anna top because whilst this top is easy to pull on and off and I've gone for a size 14 for the bust a size 8 for the waist and a size 16 for the hips so I have graded this a lot and I am my very first one I was genuinely surprised at this fit over my boobs without any kind of closure method in it that's because I always go for either sleeveless or little teeny tiny cap sleeves I feel that if you went for full sleeves on this, but either the short or the bishopy sleeves, it would be a lot more difficult to pull on and off over your head. So you might want to consider a centre back seam, which does up upside down. So kind of like does up down the bot down to the bottom of the top, much like the by hand London and a top which I will link to in the description. So I'm pinning this one together all the way along and I'm gonna sew that at five eighths of an inch. We do wanna do something slightly different for the lining pieces. So we're gonna pin these together, right sides together, and we're gonna sew this at five eighths of an inch the whole way down. But what I like to do is to sew a certain portion of this seam as a regular seam, then I'll backstitch and lengthen my stitch length and sew say six inches with the longest stitch length I have back stitch go back to my regular construction stitch and sew the remainder remainder of the seam with the construction stitch length now the reason I do that is because this is going to be where we turn the top through later. You can totally turn it through the bottom hem and leave yourself a gap and hand stitch that into place. I just prefer to do it this way. So I've pinned everything top and bottom with my regular pins. I color code my pins for this kind of thing. So I'm putting in my orange pin, which for me is my stop here, or this is the back of the garment. And then I'm gonna put another one down here. So we've pinned the center back of the lining right sides together from top to bottom, but I've got this section in the middle here, which has got the orange pins in it. So when I start stitching, I'm gonna back stitch at the end, regular construction stitch length at five eighths of an inch until I get to that orange pin where I will back stitch to secure that stitching. Keeping the needle and the work under the machine, I'm gonna go up to the longest stitch length that I have and then stitch down to this third orange pin where I will bring my stitch length back to a construction stitch length, back stitch, and then finish off the rest to the bottom where I will back stitch again. Then I'm gonna press it open and once it's pressed open, then I will take out these long basting stitches that are between these three orange pins here. And I do it that way because you could totally kind of like just not stitch that part. 
and leave that completely open but I find it easier to press in the seam allowance accurately if it's sewn accurately first and that way when I come to hand stitch it later because I'm going to ladder stitch this closed I have a nice crease which is the exact right amount of seam allowance so I don't get anything either too loose or too tight when I'm sewing up the back seam. So I'm going to get both this one and my outer back seam sewn. Go and press my darts into the center, press this seam open, same for the outer and then we can move on to the next step. So the next thing that we can do is step number eight because we're not doing step seven yet because we haven't pressed anything. I prefer to do as many things as I possibly can at the sewing machine before I get up to press. So the next thing that I'm going to do is stitch the back and side front sections together at the shoulders ending at the small circles. So there is a small circle right there which is in the inside of the neckline which is 5 eighths of an inch away from both of the raw edges. So I'm just going to backstitch at the beginning and the end and attach both the outer and the lining front pieces to the back at the shoulder seam. So I'm going to pin it and I'll show you what that looks like. So hopefully you can kind of see what's going on here. But I have the front pieces, so the princess seam is inwards, the armholes are matching up, and same for the other side, so obviously mirror images of each other. I've got them pinned at the shoulder seams, I've got the same for the lining, but that's really not that easy to see because it's all white, so this one you can obviously see a right and a wrong side of the fabric. So I'm going to get this all sewn at 5 eighths of an inch and then I can go and press everything open and the darts towards the centre back. In fact I'm going to sew my little cap sleeves first and then I'm going to go and press everything. Another thing I can do before I go to the ironing board is sew up my cap sleeves. So I have pinned them together, I've got four of these, and I'm going to sew along this long bottom edge at 5 eighths of an inch. Then I'm going to press the seam open and then I will press the wrong sides together to finish off the cap sleeve. So obviously I'm going to do the same for both sides. Okay, something else that I can do before I get up and go and iron is take my front piece, which is the T-shaped piece, and then I can take the facing piece that I drafted, which is the only pattern piece that we did need to draft. I mean, we had to alter this one, but we only needed to draft this one. And I can t and attach that along that line there. So we need to right sides together if you have a lining that does have a specific right side. Right sides together and we're going to pin that and sew that at 5 eighths of an inch. So I have sewn that seam at 5 eighths of an inch. This one I am going to press open. Okay I have everything pressed as you can see the facing seam as I mentioned I was going to press that open. The next thing that I need to do is a little bit of prep work on the T section this bit and this bit here. So so that I can then sew the back neckline together which is this short seam here. So the pattern would like me to reinforce these points and as you hopefully you can see here I have drawn on a line that I'm going to follow. This is going to be reinforcing stitching as I said so about an inch away from the pivot point which is the stitching line which is 5 eighths of an inch away from the cut edge. So I'm just going to reinforce all four of these points. It's the same both sides. The pattern also wants me to stay stitch from the this edge here down to the bottom notch to just allow me to clip into this princess seam later. I actually haven't found that that's been necessary to make the princess seam fit but if you have a fabric that you do want to be able to clip into you want to reinforce this area half an inch away from the cut edge you don't want that stitching to be visible within any of the actual garments so not at 5 eighths of an inch and not into the garment itself I would do this stitching at a half an inch away from the cut edge so I'm just going to get these little bits reinforced and then I will sew with right sides together the center back seam and I'm going to go and press that open and then we can start assembling the top. As you can see I have sewn the back neckline together and pressed that open so now we have a big loop. So we're going to take our outer fabric back and we need to start pinning this right sides together. So I've got the outer fabric at the top, the lining fabric at the bottom. 
and I'm going to match up the centre back seam with the centre back of the neck seam. We want to sew up to the small mark that we left open at our shoulder seams is going to correspond with the first pivot point. So we're going to be matching up that pivot point that we reinforced earlier with the small circle which is the gap I think you can just about see that that I left open earlier so we're going to be matching it up to that line of stitching there and if you've watched any of my sew alongs before when there's a pivot point like this you know that I prefer to sew from pivot point to pivot point back stitching at the beginning and the end and then take the work out repin and sew the second and then third seam separately I find that much easier to manage so as I say we've got the center back seam here which is going to match up with the center back of the neckline I'm going to pin those together and you're going to sew from pivot point to pivot point back stitching at the beginning at the end of 5 eighths of an inch. I have that first part of the seam sewn so the next thing I'm going to do is clip up to but not past that reinforcing stitching just so that I can then pivot this center front seam to match up with the princess seams of my side panels and I need to do that for both sides but I'm going to do it one at a time so I'm going to clip up to but not past that stitching pin everything in into place. There's princess seam notches that I can match up and I'm going to sew all the way around at 5 eighths of an inch and as I say I'm going to do the same for the other side. You should end up with something that looks a bit like this. It's a bit confusing but if you have a look at it from the right side you should end up with your princess seams sewn for the center front panel and you should still have your lining piece floating free and there should theoretically be some nice corners at your pivot points. there. So I'm going to go and press all of these seams open and then we want to repeat all of those steps with the lining panels to this side and so that means that the princess seams will get sewn crossing from the facing part of the fashion fabric through to the lining part. I'm going to go and get these pressed open and I'm only doing that now because it's going to be easier to maneuver all of this in smaller pieces so I'm going to get these press seams pressed open. I've also notched the princess seam between the notches that you use to match up the princess seam and that's just so that when I press this this will curve nicely. So I'm going to get that pressed and then we can repeat for the lining side. I have pressed my seams open. The other seam that I've pressed open as well is the first one that I sewed, the neck seam. So I've clipped that just so that it could go around any curves that I needed to and I have pressed that open as well. You want to press as many of your seams open as you can. The other thing I've done is also clip away some of the excess seam allowance from the junction where the shoulder seam meets the pivot point and the centre front seams or the princess seams just because this can get very bulky so I have clipped away some of the shoulder seam seam allowance there and I've done that for both sides as well. So now that we have the fashion fabric on we need to do exactly the same thing with our lining fabrics so I've got this is the back neckline of the garment and I need to sew the right sides together and I need to <laughs> so when you're sewing the right sides together so I'm matching up the center back seam of my lining with the center back seam of the neckline on the front piece matching that up and again we're going to be sewing to from shoulder seam where we stopped at the small circle to pivot point and the same on both sides so we're going to back stitch at the beginning and the end then clip into the pivot point and sew up the princess seams for the lining so i'm going to get that all pinned into place sewn and then i'll show you what that looks like so after all that you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this so you're going to have your facing and your lining and then you're gonna it's going to be the the front and the back your side seams are still going to be open and we want that the next thing that i'm going to do because on the original pattern what you would do is actually 
turn under this seam allowance because this would still be raw and you would stitch it to this back neckline seam allowance from shoulder point to shoulder point. So I'm going to do that by stitching in the ditch from the right side. I'm going to make sure that all of my seam allowances stay pressed open because you really don't want to press all the seam allowances up into this center back because obviously we've added layers of fabric so that would get really bulky. What I'm going to do is put a pin through my center back seam and that worked out nearly perfectly but match it up with the lining and basically just pin seam line to seam line kind of like that so that I can stitch in the ditch from the shoulder seam to the other shoulder seam just to secure that all in place and then I can give this neckline back neckline a bit of a press so we've got a nice crisp edge I don't want to press the whole of the cowl with so it has a nice crisp edge I just want to press from shoulder seam to shoulder seam because I actually prefer my cowl to not have a crisp edge on it and just kind of hang as the fabric sees fit so yeah I'm going to pin everything into place and sew from shoulder seam to shoulder seam along that back neck edge in the ditch to secure everything in place and make sure that this back collar basically that's what it is stays nicely in place and press this so it has a nice crisp edge hopefully <laughs> can very very barely tell that I have stitched in the ditch from corner point to corner point and as you can see I've also pressed that neckline flat the inside is a slightly different story the stitching line there is much more visible but again that's the inside and only you guys are going to see that so I am not worried about that So the next thing that I need to do is put on the little cap sleeves that I have sewn earlier. I have sewn the bottom seam, pressed those, and then uh, just basted the top edges together and trimmed off any excess. There is a notch where the shoulder seam is, is due to meet up. The short edge is the front, the longer edge is the back. And I've put a pin in to denote the right side, the one that I want to be on show when I'm wearing this garment because I just really like the pattern placements of both of those bearing all those things in mind flatten out my top again so I've got access to the armhole you want to make sure that you've got the lining out of the way you don't want to be catching that in this stitching we are going to put so the pin is the right side, so right sides together. The short edge is the front edge, and then the long edge is the back edge, or the long tail of the sleeve is the back edge. I'm gonna match up my notch on my sleeve cap with my shoulder seam and pin that into place like that and then I'm just going to pin the rest of this sleeve into place all, all the way down the front and the back. And then I'm gonna stitch over this basting stitching that I've done just to secure this into place because we will be stitching the sleeve opening to the lining opening using the burrito method so we don't want this to be this stitching here to be visible and that final seam is going to get stitched at 5 8 of an inch so I'm just going to go over this 3 8 of an inch basting stitch to get this sleeve cap into place if you're not using sleeve caps or adding to the pattern like I am. You don't need to do this step and you can just follow along with the next step which is going to be burritoing the armholes and we will need to do that in a specific way which I will show you in just a second. I'm obviously gonna do this for both sides as well so I've got a sleeve cap on both sleeve openings. Okay, my little cap sleeves are basted on. So we now need to finish off the armholes. And because the neckline is completely enclosed and we don't have like an open center front or center back seam, we need to burrito this in a very specific method. So I've laid it out. So I've got the back, back this side and the front this side. And I'm gonna roll everything up because what we want to get is the armhole of the outer and then the armhole of the inner matching up. So I've rolled it into a nice long burrito and I've flipped the lining out from underneath 
and enclose that burrito. I'm going to match up the shoulder seam, the double notch for the back, the single notch for the front, and sew from armhole to armhole. Something else I like to do when I'm fully lining a garment like this is to actually pin it so that I overlay the lining by an eighth of an inch. So I'll pin this into place and then show you hopefully what I mean. So I think you can just about see there that the lining is poking an eighth of an inch further than the raw edge of the main body of fabric. And that will just help when we turn everything through, that will just help to make sure that the lining stays on the inside of the garment. So like I say, I'm gonna pin it from side seam to side seam, matching up the notches, and I'm gonna sew at five eighths of an inch. Then we need to clip this seam, and I like to do that with my pinking shears. But I am getting a few steps ahead of myself, so I'm gonna get this all pinned into place, offsetting the lining by an eighth of an inch the whole way around except for right at this edge here you want to sew this so that they are completely flush but then offset it at an eighth of an inch the whole way around so that at five eighths of an inch is seam allowance so let's get that done be very careful when you're sewing this that you don't catch any of the main body of the top that you've rolled into the burrito you want to be very careful that you're only sewing through the lining layer the outer layer and then if you've got a cap sleeve in there your cap sleeve layers I have sewn that entire armhole seam. Before I cut anything, I'm gonna reach through and just check that I haven't caught anything that I didn't want to catch. I didn't think I had, it didn't feel like I had. I haven't, so that's awesome. It's definitely all free on the inside. So this is, as you can see, a very curved seam, especially kind of like in this area. So what I like to do, and I generally do with most of my armholes once I have lined them either like this or in other ways, is to use my pinking shears to basically finish off this edge it trims off the bulk of the seam pinking shears are also obviously hills and valleys so that kind of basically clips notches into this seam which makes this curved seam lie flatly you want to be really careful when you're doing this that you're not cutting anything that you don't want to ask me how I know when you get to the bit with the cap sleeve in it especially the beginning of the cap sleeve you're going through a lot of layers so just very carefully cut around the entirety of the armhole. Like I say, cutting away the bulk and basically notching the curves. I like to cut from the right side of the fabric because if the worst does happen and I clip anything, at least I would be clipping the lining, which is much easier to repair with some darning stitches and interfacing because obviously it's the lining, so it's not super obvious. Whereas if I clipped into the fashion fabric, that's a lot more difficult a chop to repair neatly. It's not impossible but it's not the easiest. Nearly there. Okay, that's all out of the way, nicely clipped, nothing has been caught. So now you can reach in between the two layers of fabric and pull one side through to the other and you will have a beautifully finished, if unpressed, armhole with a nice cap sleeve in my case. Once I've done the other side, I'm gonna take this over to the ironing board and I'm going to press that nice and flatly and I'm gonna press it from the inside and I'm gonna prioritize rolling it so that I can see a teeny tiny bit of the fashion fabric when I press it flat, which again will help the lining stay on the inside of the garment. But obviously this is a two-sided thing, so we need to do exactly the same for the other armhole so we need to burrito the other armhole so I'll show you what that looks like so again we've got the front all the way down this side we've got the back on this side and we're literally just going to roll that into a sausage when we get to a certain point 
you want to hold on to the shoulder seam of the outer fabric only you can see here's the lining fabric underneath and then you're going to take reach underneath the sausage and grab the lining fabric and bring it so that the right side of the lining is to the right side of the fashion fabric and pin into place exactly the same way that we did previously so i like to pin it again with the fashion fabric face facing me and offsetting the lining fabric by an eighth of an inch all the way around so i'm going to sew that at five eighths of an inch careful not to attach any of the sausage to the stitching and to double check and make sure when i've sewn this seam that i haven't caught anything that i don't want once it's all sewn i can trim it with my pinking shears pull it through and then we can go and press and armhole is complete so again just reaching through doesn't matter if you're reaching from the front or the back just pull it all the way through And there we go. So I've got two beautifully finished armholes. So I'm going to go and give those a press. Like I say, I'm going to press them from the lining side and just make sure that I can just about see teeny tiny peak of the outer fabric showing so that the lining definitely stays on the inside. Once that's done, we can sew up the side seams. My armholes are neatly pressed. The next thing that we need to do is sew up the side seams. So you are going to take the back portion and the front portion and meet those up at the underarm seam. And you want to nest these seam allowances just so that everything lies nice and flatly when we come to turn it and press it. There's the double notches that indicate the side seams. So we're going to match those up, match up the bottom edge and basically pin all the way along from the bottom edge of the outer fabric to the bottom edge of the lining fabric so I'll get that done and show you what it looks like okay so that is one entire side seam pinned together so we've got right side of fashion fabric to right side of fashion fabric and right side of lining to right side of lining and we've got a front to a back on both the outer fabric and the lining fabric and it should be a nice straight line like that so I'm going to sew this at five eighths of an inch and then repeat on the other side and I'm going to press these seams open all the way from the bottom edge of the outer fabric to the bottom edge of the lining it's definitely starting to look like a top so i have pressed my side seams open both for the lining and the outer and then i have just given the underarm seam a little bit of an extra press making sure that all the seam allowances remained nice and flat the next thing that we need to do is sew up the bottom of the top but we are going to first of all open up that little bit of basting that we put into the center back seam because you need to be stitching or um, putting together the bottom seam that you want to sew together through the opening that you are going to turn the top through later so i'm just going to take out all this basting stitching which should come out quite easily because it was just basting stitching right so you can see the reason i did it i've got two nice and crisp edges to sew back together later by hand which i will be doing with a ladder stitch i'm just going to take out all that excess basting thread so what you want to do is basically with the top the right way together and this is just so you don't end up with a mobius loop again ask me how i know i've tried this in the past without doing these steps and it just doesn't work for me my brain needs me to do it this way for me to end up with something that actually works so with the center back seam at the bottom edge here you're going to turn the seam allowance under for the outer and also the lining and then you're going to pin those together it doesn't need to be perfect it doesn't need to be neat it just needs to be the lining turned under and the outer turned under and pinned together so that they're held together so the next thing you want to do is reach through the slit in the center back opening you're going to reach down and you're going to grab this pin and you want to pull the top all the way through don't dislodge the pin but you want to turn basically turn the top inside out so that everything is on the inside like this 
and then you're going to go back to where you've pinned those two pieces together and you're very carefully not disturbing anything but you're very carefully going to remove the pin and replace it but this time you're going to be very precise about making sure that those center back seams are lined up i'm going to do the same thing that i did with the sleeves or the armholes i'm going to offset the lining of this top by an eighth of an inch so i've got the lining peeking out an eighth of an inch over the fashion fabric so i want to go around and find all of my seams so i've got my side seam here and you will basically be creating kind of a loop that you will need to sew around. This is why we reached through the centre back and didn't just put the two edges together because I don't think that works. I haven't done it for, for this top to test that theory because I've had that problem in the past and so I always use this method for making sure that this is going to turn back around and make an actual garment once I'm done. So I'm literally going around matching up all of my seams offsetting the lining by an eighth of an inch making sure that the seam allowances are still open because we've gone to the effort of pressing them open so we want to sew them open so that we don't end up with any bulk anywhere and once i've got all of those seams pinned together i can then go back and pin in the gaps between them and then i'm going to sew at five eighths of an inch the entire way around so i think you can see kind of created like a loop and that way when you turn it through you don't end up with something that the lining is on the wrong side which is something that has happened before i think it even happens in tonight's sewing bee when they're bagging out the sleeves of their jackets that they're making although i'm saying that from just the previews that i saw at the end of last week's so i'm not 100 percent sure but yes when you're bagging something out in my opinion and my experience it's best to pin it from the right side like we did at the beginning of this and then reach through the gut the turning gap and pull that pinning through so that you can actually get at the wrong sides of the seams and sew them and then pin them together from that way rather than trying to do it right from the get-go with the wrong sides together because i don't think i could in my head get that to align the way it needs to to actually then turn back through anyway i'm going to pin all the way around sew at five eighths of an inch five eighths of an inch away from the lining which is as i say an eighth of an inch offset from the fashion fabric so the fashion fabric seam is actually a half an inch the lining fabric is getting sewn at five eighths of an inch and again that just helps the lining to roll to the inside on the finished garment once we've pressed this seam so i'm going to get that done all the way around and i'll show you what it looks like i have sewn the bottom of the top together this is always one of my favorite parts to do so i'm going to reach inside the center back seam opening and basically post everything back through and fingers crossed we have a fully finished bottom of our top what i'm actually going to do now is i'm going to put in my sleeve ham and i'm going to press this seam open first I might actually turn it back through and do that just so it's easier but i want to press the seam open completely open and as flat as possible before i then try to roll it and press it so that a small portion of the edge of the fashion fabric is showing and that the lining is rolling to the inside i find pressing a, f a seam like this flat first really does make a difference so i'm gonna turn it back through Put my sleeve ham in and press that bottom edge nice and open before i press it flat i have a nice crisp edge and the last thing that i need to do to get this top finished is ladder stitch this opening in the center back seam closed so i'm just going to pin it into place and then you can ladder stitch, you can slip stitch, you can whip stitch, whatever you would like. I like a ladder stitch because it is invisible and I think is the kind of quickest and cleanest. But once this is done, the top is finished. And that is how you line a top with a grown on facing. I think the finish is really nice on the inside and it just means that there is no visible top stitching on the outside of either of the hem of the bottom of the top or around the sleeve openings which is just a preference of mine. Also this fabric is fairly 
sheer so having an extra layer of fabric to make it a bit more opaque is just an added bonus very pleased with this and i will show you what it looks like now I absolutely love the look of this because it has given me the ability to have it completely cleanly finished both inside and outside there's no visible top stitching anywhere which again is nothing wrong with that it's just a personal preference I also really like it for fabrics like this which is a silk viscose mix that I got from Stitch Fabrics and it is ever so slightly sheer and see-through if I hadn't fully lined this one I feel like the French seams would have been quite obvious underneath of the princess seams and I also think that I would definitely have needed to wear some kind of a slip underneath of this to make it so that you couldn't just see my underwear. I appreciate this has added a layer of difficulty to this top. It is rated as an easy pattern and I totally still think it is even though it's fully lined. You do have to cut out a little bit more fabric and there are a few more steps but I think you end up putting the same amount of work in if you were French seaming the inside of this as much as you would if you fully line the inside of this. So there is that difference. You can of course finish your inside seams however you like. I absolutely love the finish that this is given and I probably will from now on be fully lining every single one of these tops that I make if I make more <laughs> who am I kidding when I make more this method is definitely going to work for most patterns that have a grown on facing like this one I do have an entire playlist up here and also linked in the description down below of how to line other bodice or top types and I will be adding to that as well because I do have a few other tips and tricks and lining methods that I like to use. If you have any questions please let me know in the comments section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you and if you have any suggestions for what you would like to see me tackle next also let me know in the comments section down below. I'm always up for discovering new patterns and you guys always recommend some great ones to me like this one it was a recommendation from one of you lovely lot so thank you very much. If you've enjoyed this video you might want to check out this one here.